You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon. If you are back in your car listening to us, well, I bet you're grateful to be on that road, just like we're grateful to have you with us today, and we're grateful for the beautiful weather that we have today as well. Great flying weather, even better for mapping, uh, which is kind of uh, today's topic regarding when to calibrate your camera on your drone in regards to mapping. The answer may surprise you, but in an effort to continue the attitude of gratitude because it's something I have to do every day because I get negative really fast. I want to think of someone that I am grateful for. And I am grateful for people who see that I have uh, very strong intentions and good-hearted intentions and know that the style in which that I do it is not typical, but you understand why it's not typical and you see past it and you understand and look past some of the drama for some of the um, heartfelt and practical tips. Um, And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for, let's see, uh, in an effort to say thank you to a member during every show. Oh, I like that idea. All right. Thank you to a member for every show. Gosh, who do I start with? There's so many. Um, I was trying to think of Sean Stevens or Brian Fassett. Who do I start with? Because they're yes. both. <laughs> they're both wonderful guys. <laughs> Amazing human beings. Wonderful people. Amazing human beings. Brian has the heart of just, I mean, gosh. When you hear the term big teddy bear. Mm, Brian Fassett. That's Brian because he's big <laughs> and he's soft hearted. So yes, <laughs> he's such a sweet guy. I'm not going to lie. The first couple times I met Brian to like give him a hug, I'm like, I don't know if I can reach. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I grab a stool. Yeah. Hold on, Brian. <laughs> I really want to give you a big hug. I just need to level up a little bit to give you that hug. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's just, a big dude. He's just such an awesome human being, but he he's the epitome of how you should treat people. And he has a heart of gold. And even when he's struck down, he doesn't strike other people. That's true. And, and so. since you brought Sean up, I don't think I literally, and I say this um, very thoughtfully, I don't think there's been anybody in the community who has given more. Than Sean Stevens? Than Sean. Another 4K. one that comes to mind might, I mean, is John Elliott. John has given so much. So appreciative of John as well. But um, That guy takes in so much information. Yeah, he's sharp. But both of them. But yeah, I just, I had to, because of the context with which I was referencing Sean, it made me think of John. They just give so much of the, themselves, which, man, I could learn a lot from them. Because essentially, mm. you're, when you do that, you're you're being sacrificial just by definition, right? Because you're giving your time and knowledge and expertise for the benefit of others. Because at that point, it's not really benefiting you. I mean, again, by definition. Um, but anyways, okay. Awesome. I love thinking. Them, but we've got some great people in the drone community. They're just fabulous. Love them. Yes. Whew. Yes. Also- That's what I needed. Also, I want to say <laughs> thank you to Kara Murphy. Oh, uh, yeah, Murphy, bless her heart. She used to work here, and um, I totally mis- she's okay. I totally misunderstood, like, you know, when she was working here and then, like, fell off. I was like, what is going on? And never Big gave her the- lesson there. Yep, never gave her the benefit of the doubt. I am the asshole. That is for sure. Very, very sorry. She wrote an article, actually, uh, last week that was phenomenal. Oh, where? Oh, Maybe we should link to it. Oh, give her a little... where was it? It was in an unusual place too. Hmm. And gosh, it was just so well thought out. I was just like, damn, Kara, that was good. Anyway, um, grateful for her too. And uh, grateful for Grace. Uh, a couple couple weeks ago, months ago, I emailed her and I said, I am so sorry. Hmm. Like good I had you. no idea you were going good through X you. and I am so fucking sorry. You're an amazing human. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Please don't judge me. <laughs> she wrote, I deserve it. <laughs> she wrote back, yep. <laughs> no, she didn't. She wrote back GFY. No, she didn't. <laughs> she should have, but she didn't. <laughs> Would have been a good joke, but anyway. Uh, oh, um, no, very grateful for her. Also, super grateful. One more person before we move on to this question. 
uh, John Wakey. I thought I saw John Wakey on 60 Minutes the other day, and I screenshotted it, sent it to him, and I was like, hey, stop going on TV. <laughs> Are we ever going to do anything with them? Uh, yeah. Just we, no time, huh? <laughs> thanks for saying that, because now it really makes me look like the asshole, because everyone's waiting on me to schedule the meeting. Well, everyone needs to realize how much you have going on, so. Oh, uh, anyway, um... Yeah, we do need to get on that. That's part of our plan. But uh, anyway, moving on, we are grateful for you. We're grateful for everyone who, you know what, who takes the time to not just like take, 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 take from the community, but realizes what they've gained from it and stays and sticks around and gives, gives, gives. And it's been really, really empowering to see how much of that has been going on uh, recently. And that's the type of that warms my heart. And I hope the cuss word makes it on iTunes. Yeah. Not on my watch. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to the question then, Rob. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, Rob. My name is Gaurav. And I, first of all, I want to thank you. you thank you guys at Drone you. you guys are so easily reachable. Even it's like an email or a Facebook, you guys reply so spontaneously. I don't know how you guys manage such a huge community, but you guys are awesome. So... Coming on to my today's question. So my question is, how often do we need to calibrate our cameras on BGI equipment? Specifically, I'm talking about Phantom 4 Pro, but you can keep this question as general and tell our listeners how often do we need to calibrate our cameras before performing a mapping mission? Good question, I think, right? Um, I So good to hear from you, Gaurav. Really appreciate you taking the time to send in a question. We know we've seen Gaurav in, in many of our classes recently. So uh, he, smart guy he's too. doing a yeah, very smart guy and doing a serious deep dive to try to learn all this stuff. And so here's one more piece of the puzzle he's trying to put together. Definitely. And it's funny because when he first started to uh, talk, when we were discussing this show and pre-show, I was like, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this show because they only calibrate the cameras at the factory and then I sat there and I thought about it and I was like I was like what would this DP that I have been becoming close friends with say and Sean would say well you can calibrate a camera right because you can put up the calibration board and you can calibrate the colors and you can calibrate the focal length and you know you can do all these things and I've seen people do that with drones where they put up and they test the camera and they truly you know calibrate it but as far as I understand a physical camera calibration itself is done at the factory and I was like oh I hope I didn't um I hope I didn't uh, teach him something that was misunderstood mm. as far as calibrations are concerned because he did attend the mapping boot camp class, the live one. That went really well. Uh, in fact, his class, I've never, I gave the deliverables course, the mapping course, and the SAR course. So, like, they literally got like $500 bonus information for free because they blasted through the material. Like, mm. just like, just Everybody systematic was it. knocking it out. Yeah. Cool. Because um, they were happens. all prepared. Yeah. Everyone was like, yeah, I watched the class, the other class before coming to this. And it oh, really it helped. It such a big difference. It makes an amazing difference. Amazing difference. Anyway, Gaurav, thank you. Um, thank you for paying attention. Thank you for being prepared. But I hope I did not uh, cause confusion because we discussed in class doing an IMU calibration, which the IMU, the inertia, inertial measurement unit, or inertia measurement unit, measures pitch roll, yaw, how is the aircraft moving, right? And in order to understand how the aircraft is moving and how the gimbal is correcting the camera's position in space for said movement and to be able to map that in real time, um, that's obviously important information uh, for, for our mapping services, right? So IMU calibrations are typically done, I would say, monthly, um, and we give the very, very specific way to conduct an IMU calibration, the right environment, the type of table, et cetera, so that it solves other issues. Um, and then we said, you know, when you do a compass calibration before you map, you want to do a compass calibration within a few miles of wherever you're mapping in a grassy area, for sure, in an environment without uh, mag interference or multipath interference. Because if you calibrate the compass in an area with a lot of interference, it could actually make the compass worse off, hmm. which a lot of people don't understand. So then you're fighting you're making it worse. Yeah. 
So yeah. anyway, so I, well, I hope that we didn't confuse those three separate calibrations because to be specific, the two calibrations that we teach on for that class is the IMU and the compass calibration, not necessarily so much the, uh, the camera calibration. So, and it might not be that it was confusing at all, but it's just a question that he had from other research or, or just wondering or whatever. But um, I have not really heard you talk about in all of the mapping you've done which is a ton of it, I have not heard you talk about calibrating your camera. Mm -mm. No, I can, again, I can understand as to why, um, create a, like a flatter profile, but not for me. Hmm. Um, once it's done, it's done. I'm kind of one of those, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's okay, true. Okay. <laughs> but what that tells me is that you're comfortable with the, we'll call it the status of the camera in, in the way that it's set up originally. And apparently it doesn't change over time to, with any significance, right? So Yeah, and I mean, wh what kind of calibration are we talking about too? Because yeah. like, for example, the only camera that's calibrated from DJI calibrated in regards to the position of the GPS, which is so important for mapping. The only one that does that is the P4RTK. No mm -hmm. other drone does that. It okay. doesn't actually calibrate the camera sensor to the GPS. Aha, uh -huh. so maybe with the RTK, then you would need to do more calibrating with the camera. Well, yes, 100%. Okay. And once again, I've chosen to not teach on that yet. Yet. We obviously help surveyors with the RTK and we know how to use it and we've had one and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just kind of like, um, well, are you, trying, are you trying to do as many deliverables as possible? What are the deliverables? Do you want to be able to do 3D, mod 3D modeling as well? If so, then you probably are just going to want a regular Phantom, especially if you already have GPS solutions. Yeah, especially if. Because in our last podcast, I mean, there is the potential, op potential to get in a position where you don't have the GPS equipment. You buy the RTK and you realize you might still need to buy some GPS equipment, yes. right? I mean, that is possible, if not likely. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Anywho. Anywho, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for the question, Gaurav. Thanks for everyone who's been attending and supporting our live classes. We really appreciate it. Flight Mastery Live went off so much better than I thought it would. It ended um, up being fun, huh? Yes. In fact, PJ, crap. What? Um, I just remembered something that we need to follow up with that class. But anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We do really greatly appreciate it. From all of us at DroneU, my name is Paul. My name is Rob. 